Coming to you live from the Keon Sports Media Network Studios. It is by the playbook. And folks, we're already, I guess, almost a quarter of the way through the NFL season. It's weird now because we got the extra game in there. But four games under our belt. That means bye weeks are getting ready to fire up. That means the international games are right around the corner. And most importantly, we've got a pretty good idea on what a majority of these NFL teams look like now, including the Cleveland Browns, which... Boy, we will absolutely get to, unfortunately. Anyway, I'm Brandon Soder. With me is Michael Turnovan. And before we get much further than this, slight change to the programming, folks. We decided, after long, arduous meetings between, you know, the big wigs and us and going back and forth and signing contracts, and it was a whole mess, but it was worth it because we've added a third host. And he is someone that you're going to be familiar with if you listen to our previous podcast, Bet. He was a reoccurring guest. He was a fan favorite. And now a permanent mainstay on By the Playbook, ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Walls. Woo-woo! Patrick, welcome on to the show, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks, Brandon. It's uh, good to be here. And good to have you back. As I mentioned, Michael Turnovan, also here. Mike? Well, it was good until you mentioned the word permanent. We didn't discuss that. Oh, well, that, that, we'll, we'll talk after. We'll talk after. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, all right. Well, I better be getting a raise. I better still get my guaranteed money. Oh, you're getting paid? <laughs> yeah, the big one wanted me bad, man. <laughs> anyway, so this is already starting off good. So, again, happy to have Patrick on. Happy to be able to bring you even more discourse, more content here. Um, and Patrick, just like... Michael and I, another Browns fan, so another person to kind of wallow in the misery. And that's ex- disappointment. Uh, that's where we're going to start, guys. So, Browns still suck. They're now 1 in 3. They lose to Vegas in Vegas, 20 to 16. Mike, me and you watch this game together and really it just even through some of the ups, like the quick touchdown to start the game, You know, the fumble recovery for a touchdown. It just never felt like the Browns had a chance, which sucks. Because now it feels like we've slipped back into old Browns, right? Like, I I gave a whole rah-rah speech at the beginning of this year of, like, oh, it's a different environment. It's a different kind of culture. We don't think like that anymore. We're going back to feeling like we're hopeless at the very beginning of a game against a team that is already not good and was missing their best offensive and defensive player. I mean, it's starting to look like a tradition as old as time. We start the first drive and we score on the first drive every single time. And then we just shit down our leg and shit our socks. Everything goes to hell so fast. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah and, and again, it this has been a problem with Stefanski where if we're scripting plays, if that's his only job, if he could somehow just script four quarters, he'd be undefeated. <laughs> right. Like, I saw a meme the other day that was just Stefanski's head photoshopped on Belichick's body with all the Lombardi trophies in front of him. And it just said, if the NFL was all sudden death, one possession games, right? <laughs> Phenomenal. <Absolutely>. Phenomenal. <laughs> right? And then after that, like you said, it, it just falls apart. And, and I know we're going to hear injuries, Watson, a lot that goes into this, man. But nobody's excused at this point. Coaching is a major problem. Like, Patrick, I'll, I'll let you get in on this before I, I start going on my whole diatribe here. I mean, at, watching that game, you know, at any point, did you feel hopeful? After watching that first drive, like, again, like you said, the first 15, 20 plays, the script, fantastic. But at some point, stefanski has got to realize that's where his – strength as a play caller disappears and hand the reins over to Ken Dorsey. Let somebody else figure out what to do in a, you know, a moving situation instead of like, okay, cool. We did this play. We're moving on to the next one. You got to give someone who's a little bit, um, I guess, quicker in the mind to come up with something a little more fat, a little faster on the fly. Someone with less on their plate. Right. It's the whole like being able to manage the game and call the plays like that. There's a lot going on there. Like there's like Sean McVay, for example, I know calls his own plays, but he gets so immersed in things. 
Well, he's Sean McVay, but like he literally has guys where their only job is to make sure he doesn't wander onto the field. Like that dude is, yeah. you know, balls deep in this at all times. And again, oh, yeah. it's Sean McVay. Dude. But mm -hmm. yeah, you know, like Kevin Stefanski. <laughs> and I and I had like and Mike, I, I talked to you about this before the game started on Sunday, and I've kind of mm -hmm. had to reverse course where looking at the Bills last year up until they fired Ken Dorsey. Watching them turn into what they've become, they've turned back into the old Bills where suddenly they're competitive again. And dominant. And the except Browns for except for the Ravens. Except for the <laughs> which is the Ravens. I'll give them a pass there. But then he comes over to the Browns, and I feel like we start seeing a lot of that same offense that sunk the Bills, where it's a lot of dinking and dunking, screens, short passes, like not really showing any explosiveness to the offense whatsoever. And I was ready to come on here and kind of crucify Ken Dorsey over that because I feel like he hasn't gotten enough shit about it to this point. But mm -hmm. with the line, the offensive line is decimated as it's been. And let me remind you, folks, Jedrick Wills, James Hudson, Jack Conklin, Wyatt Teller, and Ethan Pochick all hurt <laughs> and not playing. That's five offensive linemen for those keeping score at home. That's Four the exact them, offense you need in that situation. Yeah, it works. And we didn't do that. Because it doesn't work. Like, <laughs> I, I'm i just, this team absolutely baffles me, man. Well, you watch them, and it's the dinking and dunking and the short passes. I mean, it's boring football. There's, As you said, there's no explosiveness. It's boring. You watch it, and it, it just chews at the clock. You're 20 plays down. Everybody's exhausted, and you settle for a field goal. You watch that happen, and granted, with our broken beyond belief offensive line that's what we have to do but we're also somehow not good enough to just dink and dunk either <laughs> so yeah. not only are we boring we're also bad, bad which makes anybody watching us go what am i doing <laughs> what am i doing with my day you want to know patrick you want to know what me and brandon did during the browns <laughs> game you got we, shit face drunk uh, that would be that would have been cool than what we did <laughs> We played a board game. <laughs> That's how boring that Browns game was of just looking up at the score and going, yeah, man, it's 10-7. to 7. <laughs> The Browns I, blew I it can, already. I can one-up you on that one. I took uh, my dog for, like, a nice two-mile walk in the rain <laughs> instead of watching the third quarter. And you were game. probably so, much less yeah. miserable for it. If somebody took yeah. a, like, if somebody took a great picture of you using, you know, the special photo mode – and just labeled Browns fan, you walking your dog in the rain. <laughs> That's so accurate. Yeah. I would have <laughs> rather played a board game with you guys. That sounds like much more fun. It's just pain, man. It's just bad. It's it is. Bad it's... football. And like, and, and let's get into this because once again, Browns Twitter, very divided on who to blame. Offensive line, major problem. Correct? Yeah. yeah very bad. You can't really blame them for that one. Right. Yeah. But le let me lay this scenario out for you, though. Right. At the beginning of this year, everybody was ready to scream about how the Carolina Panthers had the worst offensive line in the NFL. They changed quarterbacks, and two weeks in a row now, they've had a top three offensive line in the NFL. <laughs> right? So, Correct. So Bryce Young wasn't playing O-line well enough. Correct. <laughs> Which he would be a terrible <laughs> offensive lineman for the record. <laughs> but point oh, being... Watson does not come out of this without blame. All right. Like no. while he played it, this is another thing that drives me nuts. Watson played the best game he's played as a Brown. I've seen that multiple times. Yeah, man, you threw for 170 yards and we scored 10 points. Congratulations <laughs> on offense, rather 10 <laughs> points on offense. And then we got a yeah. defensive touchdown for the fourth week in a row. You almost, almost had over 200 passing yards. Right. And right. given he would have, if not for a couple of very, questionable plays both involving Amari Cooper which I'll get to in a second but Watson does not do himself any favors I don't have the PFF numbers from this week but week one when he was getting absolutely decimated by the Cowboys they went and graded that and he was responsible for I think seven of the eight sacks he took that he took that day because he's just hanging in the pocket for way too long Jeez. trying yeah. to be vintage to Sean Watson which was what made him good but it's not what is going to elevate this team now and franchise quarterbacks adjust to the situation and find ways to win. And he is not doing that. 
he is not justifying two hundred and fifty million dollars in well, the slate. It'd be kind of hard to justify two hundred and fifty million dollars. Not too many of the quarterbacks making that money right now are justifying that amount of money. True, but when you couple the baggage and the injuries and everything oh, else yeah, that's no, come I, along I with it. him, it's again, it's it's looking worse and worse every week. And while oh, yes, he played better. Defending. What was that? I'm sorry. I said, don't get me wrong. I'm not defending him. I'm just saying, like a lot of teams are looking real dumb. We just look dumber than most. Oh, like, and oh. we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. Like again, I still say that Russell Wilson contract may have been worse than Watson's. Just because they are paying that man to literally play for a different team and not even start. Um, I would do that as the Browns right now if we can send him to Miami. I'd pay I Miami to take him. I say if, if we get rid of him in any sense of the way, we're still on the hook for all of his money. So, Unless like, we can get another lawsuit out there. you know. They tried that. Browns can, oh, I haven't seen point. anything come of it yet. So... <sighs> Speaking of that, we did get a suspension. It wasn't the one we were all waiting for, unfortunately. Uh, of course, the there was a the domestic violence situation with Michael Hall at the beginning of the year. I believe it's still being investigated. I do not know all the details on that. But if you haven't seen it at this point, Michael Hall suspended for five games for violating the league's conduct policy. So, again, not a great look when we're already dealing with Watson and the first pick you had in the draft this year, who was also a local kid, is yeah. already dealing with these issues. When you're also losing football games, it just snowballs. This is feeling more and more like old Cleveland Browns. I'm getting Josh Gordon era Cleveland Browns vibes where we spent all of our time hoping that this dude was going to somehow get out of suspension and come and save us while we just lost games over and over again. I, we're getting dangerously close to that territory. I say, well, I feel like we're getting closer to like mid 2000s Bengals era when every other week you're reading about one of their players getting arrested because putting a gun to your fiance's head and was it 25 allegations against Watson now like those, those are pretty pretty serious that's yeah not not Together great they have 26 allegations <laughs> yeah <laughs> and only one of them is serving a five game suspension <laughs> oh, unreal God, this is what we're talking about. We should be talking about fighting for the division, jockeying for playoff position in a year where the AFC is a mess. And yeah, here we are. are leading it with yeah. 13 points a if game. only somebody could have called that. <laughs> it's what losing Just say. the Giants and the Raiders does to them. <sighs> Two weeks in a row. <laughs> Guys, we have the worst <laughs> offense in the NFL. Do you realize that? Yeah. Yeah. We have not scored over 20 points in a game. It's week five now. Yeah, we're, we're not good. And the defenses look bad. <laughs> There's just nothing. Well, it's because outside of that first drive of the game, the defense is on the field the whole game. Right. They have no time to rest. And even great defenses are going to get worn down like that. That said, though, I do think the defense has also taken a step back because Jim Schwartz – is essentially just running out the same thing again, not making any adjustments, and hoping it's going to work just as well. And it hasn't. We're not even playing well at home. That was our bugaboo last year, was going on the road. Our defense would fall apart. We've played our two worst defensive games at home this year. Against the <laughs> Giants and the Cowboys. So happy I'm a Vikings fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least we're not the Jags. That's true. Falcons are two <laughs> and two, as baby. We know. No, nope, nope. <laughs> They're terrible. They and are. Trevor Lawrence is a giant Easter Island head. <laughs> We're gonna get With to Trevor here. Lawrence. We've we've got plenty of of good takes. The last couple of things, though, before we we move on from this dumpster fire of a team, I hope you guys are ready. Oh, actually, speaking of Amari Cooper, right? He had the one long touchdown. This was not his fault. Where Pochick got called for holding, and it was incredibly ticky-tack. Did not affect yeah. the play at all. Got a touchdown called back. You can not know a whole lot about what they throw flags on, like whether it's loose or tight. When you know when like an announcer or a commentator calls it out and genuinely disagrees with and it. And the rules official that they had, too. Something's up. Something's yeah. up when they blatantly say on the broadcast – 
Yeah, I don't think so. That looks kind of finicky. <laughs> you know it's not right. No. And on top of that, the one that bothered me, it really bothered me, Cooper, the reason he's on this team and the reason he's been touted so much in his career is because he's a great route runner and he has sure hands. He's not somebody that deals with drops. And all of a sudden this year, he I don't know if he's not interested, if he's just disconnected here. Whatever it is, man, he is not playing like Cooper. He had a ball go square off of his chest and up into the air and just got intercepted. Again, could not be more open. Could not, to Watson's credit, could not have been a better pass. No, oh, just playing volleyball. Yeah. He's got a career in it. He would. He's tall. He'd be a great volleyball player. So maybe he just doesn't like Deshaun. <laughs> well, and that's if my I was point. Rid of him, I will. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, though. Just throw that ball, I'd catch it. <laughs> yeah. Bring back Joe. <laughs> Whether it's uh, fair or true or not, all I'm saying is get ready for the Amari Cooper wants out. Amari Cooper wants to go to the Chiefs. I'm telling you, especially with Rasheed Rice out, those rumors are going to start flying, man, because that's what happens to bad teams. Yeah. I and, almost went to the Niners. But and, close. That's Dude, true, I yeah. I would have taken that trade 100%, though. Oh, yeah. Well, with Fayouk, yeah. I would have, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, And then the last thing, and again, it's just because this team is losing, because otherwise, I don't think any of us would give a shit. Again, Patrick, I don't know if you caught the the end of the game. So, like, when everything's wrapping up, like, the second, like, we're literally two minutes removed from Watson completely shitting the bed on fourth down, which I didn't even touch on that, man. That was a terrible effort from oh, Watson. Yeah. He had multiple guys <laughs> open on fourth down. Yeah, right. It was fourth down. I forget exactly where they were, but they were either in the red zone or damn close. He had multiple options open right away to get a quick pass off, pick up the first down, and he just tucks it and rolls it, tries to like kind of throw I guess and then eventually just takes a sack the game's over oh yeah. my god and I hate yep, when yeah, people do the like freeze frame thing where like oh well look at all these guys that were open when Watson had this exact moment in time because it's the NFL guys are fast those holes are going to close but I mean Mike we watched this live and I was screaming at the TV at it was I think it was 88 <laughs> the tight end I'm like D -d -d right there yeah, immediately that was crazy you immediately, immediately like, dude, he got off on his release. He was wide open immediately. <laughs> and just like, didn't see him. I don't know. I didn't see it. I was he was looking for the home run. Card. Yeah. That was yeah, the was home run. Picking a card. <laughs> <laughs> I was picking a card up, and he's like, watch this. And I look up, and I'm, yeah. I'm not even, what, 88 took two steps and cuts left. I'm open. <laughs> I'm and open. You gotta realize that ice cream cone in Candyland is more important than the fourth quarter play. I wish it was Candyland. <sighs> I wish it was Candyland. It was but a stupid NFL game from the '90s, which I won. You, so yes, he one did. Of us was By Sunday, somebody won. Sunday. But like, but yeah. the, the whole point of that, like, less than a minute removed from that, you know, Raiders go out, kneel the ball, game's over. Browns are smiling, laughing. Like, dapping guys up on the Raiders. Just, like, no competitive fire in the slightest. And I'm not saying they got to go and sulk and be pissed off. I mean, these guys are getting paid millions of dollars to play a kid's game. Like, it, it's fun. Sure. But horrible look when you're one and three yeah. and it doesn't look like anybody cares at all. The team feels like the, it, it feels like they know the season's lost. They, they got to just be laughing through the pain. That's all you can do. I don't know, man. I mean, it, I, I hope that's all they're doing because that, that is not a great look. You are very right. But let's, I, I want the team to have some type of drive. Something. But let, let's move to something happier, or at least another team we can complain about and feel better about ourselves. So, Patrick, uh, first time, obviously, on the show, and uh, we're planning the show on the show here. So what we do is we have about eight topics. I think we have nine today because a couple things broke last second. And we're going to take turns going through. I'll list off what all the topics are real quick before we start. Start with you today. Pick whichever one you want to hit on. Then we'll go Mike and myself. and We'll just keep rotating on through. So here's what we got today, guys. A lot of games because a lot of good action to kind of catch up on. A lot of news this week. 
Uh, Vikings established themselves as a true contender. They beat Green Bay 31 to 29. Mike's Vikes, baby. Mike is a Vikings <laughs> fan, as you all well know. Uh, weird game in New York. The Jets losing to the Broncos 10 to 9 in an ugly game. Uh, Easter Island head continues to struggle. Jaguars uh, have not won a game. I believe they're the only team in the NFL that does not have a win at this point. They lost 24 to 20 to the Texans. Uh, Jaden Daniels, not only looking like a good rookie, but maybe a, a very, very good quarterback right out of the gate. They demolished the Cardinals 42 to 14. Jared Goff had a perfect game last night. Literally did not miss a pass, even though his coach didn't know or drop that. one. He did not drop one either. Uh, so we'll definitely hit that. They beat the Seahawks 42 to 29 on Monday night. Flack is back. Joe Flacco. He's back. He's still fine. He's good. Despite being in an offense, not built for him whatsoever. Able to beat the Steelers, hand them their first loss 27 to 24. <laughs> Ravens. <laughs> I see you guys adding things on as we, as we go through the topics here for the fans at home. We'll release that as bonus content. Um, <laughs> We got the Ravens. Ravens are still dominant despite the weird start to the season. They beat the Bills 35-10. to Bills were looking like the best team in the league up until Sunday night. Uh, and then last two things, which coach is going to be fired during the season? Who's the most likely to be gone first? A lot of good candidates for that, which is concerning this early in the year. And what broke right before we came on, Devontae Adams. Supposedly the Raiders are now open for a trade to send Devontae Adams out. So all of that said, Patrick. Where do you want to start? The board is yours. I mean, honestly, after seeing the stats and uh, listening to your guys, well, Brandon, your advice for fantasy football and who to pick up, I definitely want to go for the uh, Jets and Broncos and Bo Nix lighting the world on fire with his 60 yards passing. That's <laughs> one way to say it. So, again, th this was just a weird game. Like Pat, you can go ahead, Patrick. If you had thoughts, you go for it. But I, the breakdown of this is absurd. No, 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 absolutely. You get us going on it. So first things first. Again, as he said, Bo Nix, sixty yards passing on the day and one, which I think is the first time that's happened since like the forties in the NFL. So that's nuts. Bo Nix won the game despite having Bo Nix at quarterback. <laughs> he started started the game seven for fifteen. With negative seven passing yards. No. Minus He's one yard good. per attempt, or per completion, rather. Then my maybe my favorite stat here. Cortland Sutton. <laughs> so he completed, I'm trying to, was it, let's see, 12, it was 12, 12 completions all together. 12 uh -huh. completions that Knicks had. Three of those went to Cortland Sutton for 60 yards. Now you may be thinking, how is that possible? Because Bo Knicks finished with 60 yards. Well, you see, there were nine other receivers targeted. <laughs> and those nine receivers had a total of nine receptions for zero yards. <laughs> Javante, three yards. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Burden, three yards. Troy Franklin, minus two. And the baddie himself, Tyler Batty, minus four. <laughs> <laughs> Just like... I, I wish I had a picture of the passing chart up. Like, this feels like, again, this feels like a bad rookie quarterback that's overwhelmed. Like, that kind of a game, which isn't super surprising considering it's Bo Nix. But it is surprising that they won See, and they beat Aaron Rodgers. He's a winner, and winners win. <laughs> that's what we saw. Winners well, win. Are we seeing the rise of Tim Tebow Nix? Is that what you're telling me? All I'm saying is we go back and look at the tape from college. He was not known for pushing the ball down the field. No, he, he was not. one of the shortest average air yards per pass. Because in year. Oregon, you in can do that. <laughs> Clearly, in you can do it in the NFL. Five say, yards, really, you can five yards of completion. <laughs> John 316.2. How... <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> I got Knicks. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> winners win. <laughs> well, speaking of winners, Rodgers was not one. 24-42, 225 yards, no touchdowns. I think it's a first time. He had some crazy streak of throwing touchdowns in home games. Just didn't happen. Running game was bad. Brees Hall had four yards on the day. 
which in a rain-soaked game like that, you think you go to your, your big running backs. Braylon Allen, not much yeah. better. He had 34 yards. Aaron Rodgers had 26 rushing yards. Very weird game, man. Did they add a wheel to the end of his Achilles? Like, how the hell does he still move that way? I, He's like 40. <laughs> what are we doing? That had to have been all running for his life. I, I have no other explanation. <laughs> they, they give him Heelys? <laughs> that I would have paid to see on that MetLife field. Maybe slipping and sliding yeah, everywhere. I say it might have saved his knee. He just slid forward 25 yards over the course of the game. That's what happened. <laughs> but so I'm willing – to chop this up is just a weird anomaly for the Jets. Again, weird weather game. You're not going to lose a lot of games where you give up 60 passing yards, right? No. Denver's defense, still phenomenal. Sertan was locking down Garrett Wilson all day. Dude, so, Garrett Wilson has not looked good this year. I don't think Rodgers likes him. He might be a fraud. He Maybe he is a fraud. I think it's just one of the cases where Rodgers likes his guys, and that's going to be that, man. I, I don't have any other good explanations. I mean, uh, I'm trying to even find – yeah, Wilson, eight targets, five receptions, 40 yards. Mike Williams had more. I mean, yeah. Al, no. No, Alan Lazard had eight targets, five receptions for 58 yards. Mike Will – also, Mike Will made it. Mike Will had five targets, four receptions, and 67 yards. But Mike Will isn't one of Rogers' guys, you know? Like, Alan Lazard – is one of Rodgers' guys that he's played with before. But Rodgers can acquire new guys, right? Lazard wasn't always an Aaron Rodgers guy, so maybe Mike Williams is in the club and Garrett Wilson isn't. Maybe. I mean, Garrett Wilson still got eight targets. Like, he led, he tied for the lead in targets. He just. No, that's fair. I say, I guess he just couldn't get away from from Pat. Yeah. And again, I... it's unlike what he did the last two years with Flacco, Zach Wilson passing him the ball. Which mm-hmm. is crazy. So, it... yeah. And again, maybe it's just the chemistry hasn't synced up yet, which if that is the case, I'm kind of terrified as to what the Jets could be because they've been winning without Wilson really being effective. Nope. So we'll see what happens there. Only other thing that I, I kind of want to touch on with this game because we've seen it twice now. So two weeks ago, it was the weird Roger scoring a touchdown, Salah coming in for a hug, and Rogers like pushing him away. And that was kind of weird, but like I feel like we kind of brushed it off because they still won. So whatever. But then this game, you know, Salah makes an interesting comment afterwards talking about how the team is struggling with cadences, which that's that, you know, trigger word you hear all the time with Aaron Rodgers and how he likes to run the offense, the hard counts, the silent cadences, all of that. And, you know, just essentially laid out like, look, this isn't working for everybody except Aaron. And Aaron didn't like he didn't come back out and attack him directly because Rodgers won't typically do that. But I mean, are you guys getting the feeling that things might not be going well under the surface? Um, I mean, it's go ahead, Mike. I'm going with the winner who's won before and not the fraud who gives Brees Hall what four ten attempts and four yards. Oh, I'm not defending either one of them. No, here. I'm just saying Sala, Sala, whatever, Bob, um, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Figure out your cadence, man. You've had two off seasons now. You've had two seasons with Rodgers. Granted, Achilles injury, he can't practice, but you got to get that one figured out. I'm going with Rodgers, and I know that sounds crazy to, like, spit in your coach's face, but Rodgers knows what he's doing. There's maybe two other quarterbacks in the league I would trust, like I trust Rodgers. I'm, I'm going to take what you said, Mike, and run with it. He does know what he's doing because – this has been a common theme for him for the past 10 years oh, yeah. since whenever Mike McCarthy left is this coach isn't right for me. Like he's an idiot. He doesn't know what I want to do. He can't, can't implement it. So I'm going to bash him until the, the front office gets rid of him. We're going to bring in my own guy and then I'm going to do it again in two years. So I, I feel like Rogers just straight up isn't listening to any of the play calls. And no. just running his own offense, which is even funnier because Nathaniel Hackett's the OC, <laughs> which is his That's guy. That's a Rodgers guy. Right. So I, I'm at this point, what I'm picturing is Rodgers is just running the offense, and they haven't told Hackett, but it's like when you're playing a game with your, like, three-year-old cousin and you don't actually controller. plug the controller yeah, in the controller that's off. <laughs> it's just like going to some, like, Bluetooth speaker in the back of the booth. Yep. Like, nothing's going to Rodgers at all. And they're just like, all right, you, you, good job, Nate. You're good. Give him the toy steering wheel in the car or whatever the kid <laughs> yeah. honks you honk. 
<laughs> Way to go. You still can't hack it. <laughs> Boo. I hate you, Mike. Hey. I didn't On to the next that. one. So, yeah, speaking of Mike, it, go ahead, man. Where, where do you want to go, bud? Uh, let's Take the see. fake steering wheel and, and drive this podcast into success here. <laughs> All right. So I think I want to go with the Easter Island head, Unga Bunga there, continuing to struggle <laughs> because it is so funny. Because if they can't tank for Trevor, I guess they're going to tank with Trevor. He's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> he is so hard to watch. I don't understand what happened to him. I felt like he was good in the first half of last year, but recently, like, he's just looked awful. Like, there was, a, oh, it, it's like a switch. You know, it just flipped, and all of a sudden, this guy's dog shit. <laughs> did it, it just, he seems lost out there, and it's odd because from an offensive standpoint, I, I feel like the Jags have some of the best weapons they've had in a while. Dude, between work is good. Brian Thomas looks very he's good. very good so far. Granted, Evan Ingram is. I think Evan Ingram's still hurt, so they have like Brian or you Brandon still got Etn like tight end who's been looking good. And yeah, Etn's back there. Nowhere like, near the worst offense. Or really, I don't think either of their units are particularly bottom barrel. No, yeah. I'd say that's a good offense, frankly. Defense, too. Yeah. yeah, it's good. So what's going on? I I. I they're one of the more baffling teams, and I feel like typically when you get these situations where you can't point to a specific player, and on top of that, you have your owner talking about how it's the most talented team he's seen since he's taken over, really only one place you can go, and that's mm-hmm. Doug Peterson. Yeah. Right? I mean, we've been down on Peterson for a while. It, it felt like he kind of caught lightning in the bottle with Nick Foles and the Eagles, had a lucky run up there, and... He just hasn't been able to to figure it out since. I I don't think Trevor Lawrence is hopeless at this point, though he definitely has not lived up to the bill by any means. No, no. He hasn't lived up to that contract. Maybe that's part of it, too, either the pressure or just the security of having that contract there. And knowing, like, it doesn't matter how I go out and play. We're going to be fine. I'd I'd argue that he's in a slump because we have seen him good. We haven't – the expectation was impossibly high. Let's just get that expectation. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Just throw it away. That was a stupid expectation set. I don't think anybody really bought into that because he was being compared to Peyton Manning, which is everybody insane. bought into that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was the, it's he's so still dumb. probably the most highly touted prospect I've seen in my lifetime, even more than Caleb, to be honest with you. Like, this kid was more than Caleb, more than high school. Yeah. Andrew Muck. It's yeah. so dumb. It's such a dumb thing that that ever happens. But point being like we saw him and he looked good so i think it's just a slump and maybe it is brought up by doug peterson but we've seen him under throw and overthrow balls horribly like you know again we always like to compare things to madden when you're playing madden and you press x and your quarterback just throws the worst pass you've ever seen in your life <laughs> it's like what was that i feel like you get at least five of those out of trevor lawrence a game and you're like Dude, yeah what the hell are you doing like coaching, yeah, I like I love to blame Doug Peterson because this team is better than they are. But again, some of those throws that come out of Trevor Lawrence's hand, you're like, are you, are you drunk? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, the and the, the what? And the reason I feel like he's lost, like the the big giveaway for me is when you you take the the spin move that does nothing. He's done that <laughs> at least once a week, where he's not like going away in any particular direction. He just kind of spins in place it's and there. hopes that it's going to confuse. The pass rusher, and he then goes down lazily to the left. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't He's work, man. <laughs> it doesn't work. But before we flip sides here, because the Texans definitely have some good things to talk about with them, go back to that 2021 draft, man. And we talk plenty about how bad this quarterback class is looking, and it's well out. It's Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, uh, Justin Fields, who is looking much better this year. Mac Jones, Trey Lance. Lance. Not a good class. I mean, Brock Purdy, far and away, the best quarterback out of that class. I still but, got hope for Mac. He's going to take over for Trevor Lawrence. He's going to light the world on fire. Oh, he looks so good against no. the Bills. <laughs> he looked awful. I know. <laughs> but but point so being, awful. even outside of that, man, this stack, this draft was stacked. Like, you still had guys like Jamar Chase, Patrick Sertan, Micah Parsons. Like, this was a good draft class. But, man, this might be the worst stretch of, like, top four picks ever. 
right? In a loaded class, it went Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, exactly. Trey Lance, and Kyle Pitts. I mean, to be fair, there are two Pro Bowlers in that top four. Barely. Yes. Kyle I'm, Pitts was a Pro Bowler by name only. Trevor Lawrence had a solid, I'd say about 20 game stretch. From yeah. From 2022, probably what, like the fifth or sixth game in, mm-hmm. till when it, what it, it was his knee last year, right? That he screwed up in like yeah. week eight or yep. week nine. And then came back yeah. and played he immediately. Was, yeah, he which was, was an insane. absolute stud for the second two thirds of 2022 and the first two thirds of 2023. So we know that he has it in him. That's what I'm saying. It's just, but like the, since he came back from that injury, he does not look like that same quarterback. So just, just saying he shared a pro bowl team with Tyler Huntley. So mm-hmm. take that for yeah, what but it's Tyler worth. Huntley only got there because of injuries. Trevor Lawrence was actually voted in. I know. I just, I needed to point that out because Huntley was awful last night and, I, I purposely chose not to put that game on our run sheet today because it was <laughs> awful. Uh, but Dude. congratulations to the Titans on a win. Yeah. So that was fun. Yeah, good for them. Uh, but <laughs> on the other side, Ooh. though, oh, go ahead, Mike. Ooh. I was just, just going to making dumb noises. Ass. Yeah, just making dumb noises. Just, you know, maybe Will Levis will get Gio Duddy back after that win. Who knows? <laughs> uh, considering he threw – four passes and still manage to throw a pick probably not <laughs> he's a stud know. did you okay <laughs> that, that, winners I, win winners win <laughs> not to deviate man but i don't know if you guys saw so mason rudolph played most of that game we've obviously got history with him here in cleveland uh some guy was posting how i guess rudolph was sliding into his girls dms while they were on a date during the game yeah <laughs> and just ruined his night my favorite Honestly, part, if you needed person. more reasons to hate this guy. My favorite part about that was he looks at his girlfriend in the eyes and goes, I would trade you for a win for the Dolphins. <laughs> 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 as if she's not already for the streets having NFL quarterbacks slide into her DMs and her boyfriend just casually be okay with it. Get some self confidence, brother. Come on, nobody's down that bad. We're, we're uh, all we're cheering for him. Trading your girlfriend for a Dolphins win is so funny. <laughs> I said maybe for a Super Bowl, but <laughs> maybe she's not a win maybe like she's yours. not a good. I, there are girlfriends I would have traded for a singular win. We don't know what I that would, relationship's I would have like. Some girlfriends for a touchdown. So that's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> I but, mean, yeah, this girl kind of looked like a Baker Cheesecake Factory parking lot gal. So <laughs> <laughs> before we go down that rabbit hole, <laughs> other side of this game, man, C.J. Stroud. Stud. Absolute so stud. Excellent game from him. Uh, it, it just On top of everything, the dude's poise is just nuts. It, it doesn't matter what the game situation is. He's always cool. He's calm. He's collected. He, he let a game-winning drive, 18 seconds left on the clock. 345 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, that rookie year was no fluke. Yeah. Stroud, Stroud is well on his way to being an elite quarterback in the league. I, I love seeing it. And it, it drives me crazy too. Cause going back to the draft, you know, you always hear like random things coming out about prospects to try to lower their stock. Who knows what's real, what's not, but there was so much made about this dude's wonderlick score. How and dumb he was. Yeah. <laughs> well, the guy's yeah, an idiot. Too like dumb to feel the pressure. I, it's not fair. If it works, it works. I don't he's care. I don't have advantage. He's too dumb to understand <laughs> what's going on, so he just goes out there and slings it. The guy doesn't know how to lose. <laughs> he's so stupid. <laughs> but no, so that was all – it was all BS. Like, the, the dude was the most NFL-ready quarterback in that draft from the jump. The whole argument was that there was just more upside with Bryce because of his athleticism. But, man, it's again, it's just – it's good to see – him and Justin Fields. And it's good to see Ohio State quarterbacks finally settling into the NFL and doing very well. And Stroud can yeah. very easily, you know, hang around, be a top one or two quarterback, depending on what happens with Mahomes in the future. It's good to see. Yeah, same. Also, I don't know if you guys saw this news yet, but uh, him and Frank Gore Sr., they're writing a children's book. It's going to be in Green Crayon. <laughs> The problem is CJ was dumb before the career. Frank is just Frank was dumb before the career too. He scored a six on his Wonderlick. You could I didn't even know you could go that low. You 
you get like five uh, for signing your name. <laughs> I say it's not the lowest, but I feel like most people wouldn't remember Morris Claiborne. He he had a four. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Jeez. I remember there was a Mike. There was a kid that me and Patrick went. The test? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it wet? <laughs> Oh, I'm just drool, guys. <laughs> but I'm not even joking, though, and I'm not name dropping anybody for obvious reasons. But me and Patrick went to school with somebody that scored a six on their ACT. Yeah, so it's possible. Yeah. I say so you're gonna have to send me that name because I don't remember that. It was my grade. You might not have remembered him, but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk off air. There was a guy in our school who uh, probably should have been a quarterback for Ohio State, but they wanted his ACT scores to be higher than an eleven. So Ooh. it's kind of a bummer. It's a lot. That's double digits. Kind of. That's that's got to stick with you forever. <laughs> so he, he couldn't find someone to pay another person to take the test for him. Like, Ohio State wouldn't do that, good. dude. It's yeah, so he could not have been that good if they couldn't do that for him. It's an eleven. <laughs> Just read a book, <laughs> Christ. I say you get eight points for spelling your name correctly. That's it. Hey, man. That part, that's not easy. My last name didn't fit on that Scantron, okay? So I understand the struggle, right? Dude, that always stressed me out. How does that work? I just left yeah. a letter off at the end. So Brandon, Brandon Soderpenne did pretty well, I guess, but I never got my own results. I say, did they then offer you as a special at uh, Olive Garden's all you possible the next day? Crushed testing, crushed pasta. <laughs> Oh. You know, see, I've never tried Brandon. coke in my penne before, but you know, get some soda pasta, soda penne. Yeah, some soda penne. <laughs> Suddenly, I crave Olive Garden. I hate this. I say we're going there tomorrow. All you can eat pasta bowl. All right, we'll meet you down there. It's only two hours. Right. Mike, you doing anything tomorrow night? Fucking going to Olive Garden now, dude. We're at, we're so we're being we're being smart about this. We're going next week. My girlfriend's getting a sleep study done, which she badly needed. Uh, so they need her to come and show up and fall asleep at like nine o'clock, which we don't do because we're adults. Uh, so we are going to Endless Possible at like seven thirty. Say, man, I so was it's just not waiting. physically possible. I don't have enough I, time in the day to do it. I it's fell asleep past my on bedtime. the couch. I fell asleep on the couch watching football at like eight forty-five. This is what it's like to not have kids. Man, Pretty cool. Uh, Should have <laughs> yeah, thought, nice. thought about that. Should have thought about that. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and move on. So I've got my pick of the board. So I, I think we got to talk. We we owe it to Joe Flacco to talk yes. about this. Not only a win for him, but to beat the Steelers on top of it, who are leading the AFC North and were undefeated at that point. Guys, I I think it's finally time to have this conversation. Is Joe Flacco an elite backup quarterback? Elite Dragon elite Joe backup, Flacco. Yes. Oh. <laughs> he's an elite backup quarterback. This is yeah. two teams now he's pulled this off for. I say he's a borderline above average starter. <laughs> Things I aspire to be in life. <laughs> I mean, you make starting quarterback in the NFL, you know, that's at least $20 million in your pocket every season. That's a good point, but... Yeah. We had Flacco, he went in pretty early. Richardson only had four attempts when he went out, um, but actually not playing terribly when he did. 16 to 26, 168 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, that's that's Flacco. He's going to go out and sling it. Um, again, just he looked like Brown's Joe Flacco again, which is kind of disheartening because my take for a long time has been, like, if he wasn't with that Brown's, you know, Kubiak adjacent system, it wasn't going to work out as well for him because that's where he's always had success. And to see him go and do it in an offense that it's not even remotely built around his skill set and still win, it hurts. It's just, he's good. He's just yeah. a good backup quarterback, like Patrick said. He knows how to get the ball to his receivers, and he's got solid receivers there. Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce is showing out right now josh downs showed up last year and you knew when he came back he was going to make a difference got a good run game you know it's not this is with ad mitchell's I mean, not even at full force yet i think he's going to be no. incredible by the time he gets going yeah i mean say, i'm going to catch myself before i say what i was going to but like he's showing that Whoa. as long as you are 
smart and able to get the ball into a relatively close proximity to receivers, you can be a quarterback in the NFL. So are you saying he's smart? Did he do well on the Wonderlick? I don't know about know. that, but like. Obviously, I'm looking this I, up. I was about to say he's showing that it's not that hard to be an NFL quarterback. Obviously, that's not the truth. <laughs> no. But. <laughs> we would not be doing a podcast right now. No, no. You're well. I don't know about you. I'm five foot nine. I definitely would not be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Look at well, you know I don't, Bryce Young. It's not working for him. Patrick, yes, Patrick, man. Patrick. If not, not, not to get too out of hand, none of us would be. I, dude, I'm six foot one. I have a chance. <laughs> no. I've got a shot, and I got a fucking cannon, brother. <laughs> get me in, coach. So we'll let you guys know how that goes. So maybe that'll be our pick em punishment as we make Mike or whoever loses go try out for like a semi-pro football team. Holy crap. Mike, all I got to say order. <laughs> is just Google Jared Lorenzen. This is how I would picture you as a quarterback in the NFL. Well, that's getting looked up right now. I'm definitely still in this podcast. <laughs> the keys clicking furiously in the background. <laughs> stud <laughs> stud the hefty lefty <laughs> dude jared lorenzen are you give calling me, him fat give me I, any <laughs> professional overweight player and i'm gonna love them because there's nothing <laughs> funnier than somebody at the peak of their sport and they are just the most out of shape piece of shit there is <laughs> Brandon, yeah. I don't know if you Googled this or know who this oh, is. Oh, I know the hefty lefty. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. AFL legend. Looking at his pictures, he looks like, um, was it Andy Reid, who they got uh, as a 13-year-old in the pass punt kick competition where he's like six foot two, 190 pounds, and just towering over everybody? This is what those pictures look like. Yeah, it's incredible. Incredible. But – all of that to say, before we dive into overweight professional athletes, a <laughs> um, little bit questionable about how Flacco got in in the first place. So Anthony Richardson, he's been healthy so far, but, I mean, just his running style, it's going to get him hurt. You're just going to have to accept this if you're a Colts fan. But he tweaked his, I think his hip, earlier on in the game. And within a couple of plays, Steichen puts him back in and then calls a quarterback run right up the rip, and that's what ends up getting him hurt and knocks him out for the rest of the game. So a little bit questionable on the call from Steichen. I generally like him as a play caller. Don't love putting your quarterback in that kind of risk. Like if you – I don't know. You at least go out and try to throw the ball a little bit before you just throw him right back into the pile. It, you know Richardson's not going to protect himself. You kind of have to to do it for him at that point if you're the coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But all of that, too, on the other side of it, Steelers lost, and the conversation was kind of, I feel like early in the year, like, oh, we're going to ride with Fields as the starting quarterback until he loses. Man, he That was probably the best game Justin Fields has played so far this year, and oh, it, it was the best possible scenario for him as well because they lost a game in which it was not on him at all. The defense no. let him down massively, which is crazy when you think about how dominant the defense has been, although I did bring up on the last podcast the the stretch of quarterbacks they've gotten to play, and I'm not saying Steelers have like a bottom defense or anything, but I do think they were really assisted by who they were going up against. They had Kirk Cousins still really shaking off rust and not trusting his Achilles. He, he was a statue in that Falcons game. They yeah. had Bo Nix in his second start. And then an injured Justin Herbert, who should have never been playing in week three. So you get three quarterbacks that are either rattled or are injured, so they can't move around a lot. And you couple that with TJ Watt and the rest of that defensive line. Yeah, the defense is going to look phenomenal. They finally get a, a healthy, and it, it's crazy to say because this is Joe Flacco we're talking about, but like a healthy, <laughs> solid, smart starting quarterback, and he really kind of decimated that defense. So, yeah, something he, to look out he for. He put the ball where it needs to go. <laughs> something to look oh, out yeah, for. So, go, go ahead, Patrick. Sorry. I'm, I'm excited for Fields. I, I hope he keeps the uh, the job because I don't want Russ to ever cook again. I, I think um, he's going to keep it unless he completely shits the bed or gets hurt. It, yeah. it feels like the Steelers are just going to be like, oh, Russ is still improving. It's a slow recovery, yada, yada. He's going to be hurt until they need him not to be. And, yeah. And, and also, 
Still the most hilarious thing to me. He's done this since week one. So while he's not technically active, Russ has been the emergency starter or the emergency quarterback. Yep. So despite him being deactivated from the roster, the dude's still going out there in full pads and eye black and everything. Just standing he, on the sidelines. Ready to go. Hit me of a try hard. He is such a tool. I he, love he it. He is that kid in high school who in the middle of gym class is dead sprinting, dripping sweat while everyone else is just kind of standing around like, yeah, I guess we'll we'll play basketball today. <laughs> He's the one diving for the loose balls, bleeding. God. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and move on. We've got three topics down. Patrick, you're back up. So this is not a stat line that you generally see from anybody, but the fact that this man. We already talked about Bo Nix. I say this is a better one. He threw a perfect game and had zero drop passes. Probably the only quarterback to ever do that in the NFL, but the Lions taking down the Seahawks. Jared Goff, what was it, 18 for 18, two touchdown passes, and then a touchdown catch. Like, he, he's outperforming Sam Laporta this year at this you, point. You love to see it. it yeah. that So the, the score doesn't even really do it justice because the Seahawks – they had a couple of mistakes at the end when they were getting aggressive, but this, for the first time this year, felt like we had an old-fashioned NFL shootout. Like, back when touchdowns right. was getting out of control. This year, it feels like we've really taken a step back, and the numbers kind of back that up as far as passing statistics go. We haven't gotten games like this. No. So it was refreshing, just the back and forth. Seahawks are still a good team. That Lions offense looks incredible. Dude, oh, my God. It's, it's it was unfair. just fun. But you're watching and you're like, Jameer Gibbs and Monty just switched roles. And you're yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. Okay. So they have two stellar running backs that can both do not like the same things, but to a lesser level, they can do it just as well as one another. And that's so scary with this offense. Yeah. Three touchdowns between the two of them as well. Like, absolutely <laughs> crazy. Go ahead, go ahead Patrick. I say it's literally like the old school uh, Titans when they had, um, oh God, the Chris Johnson and whatever the hell the guy's name was from USC. It's just like, oh, we're just going to have this guy run all over you. He gets tired. We'll put in this guy. He'll run all over you. Oh, this guy's healthy again. He'll run all over you again. Why? Am I, get, not fair. I can picture that's exactly who you're talking about. Now, oh, that's going to bother me. Played for the Jets, too, if I remember right. Yeah. Whoever this was. Lendale, uh, I think his first name was. Either way. N- n- neither here nor there. That 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 sounds right. But other side too, though, man. Like as good as the Lions were, Kenneth Walker, dude. I He's I had monster. I had Walker oh, sitting on my fantasy monster. bench because I figure he's been hurt for a few weeks now. You know, maybe he's gonna take it a little bit easy. Twelve twelve rushes, eighty oh, yards, three, three touchdowns. touchdowns. Come on. Did, and he had four receptions on top flip? of that. Oh, yeah, when he just refused, absolutely refused to go down on a play. (laughs) Yeah. Incredible. It's not even like he pushed, he rolled over him for another yard. He rolled over him, stood up, and fought for four more yards. (laughs) (laughs) I can't even imagine how strong you have to be to bully an NFL player to do that. Well, and that's what Kenneth Walker is, man. That's always been his profile. He's 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 awesome. uh, So fun to watch. So... Uh, Geno Smith still had a good game, a touchdown and a pick, but almost 400 yards. He's your NFL passing leader right now, mind you. Wow. I really don't think Damn. Smith has taken a step back like I thought he would. I think, Mike, you kind of thought he would, too, without Pete Carroll there. Still playing some pretty good ball. Now, Seattle didn't exactly have the, the toughest schedule leading up to this. Uh, I'm trying to remember. They, had, uh, they beat the Patriots. I know for a fact. And I am it was completely Patriots, Broncos and Dolphins. Thank you. Yeah, is that which one? Completely blanking. Um, yeah, so not the the greatest set of teams, but still, I think the Seahawks are going to be good. They still got the Niners to deal with in that division, so that's going to make it difficult for them to make any kind of a run. But all that to say, man, can't take anything away from the Lions. No, um, I say that receiving core is terrifying, dude. Like. Monra just perusing the middle, catching any ball that he wants, and then you double him, and Jameson's like, "Okay, bye." Yeah, 
Jerry yo, Ross he just took off, off man. And the only thing that's going to kill the Lions, if they can't put up offense like this, Terry on Arnold. Like, I don't know if you guys watch this game closely. He's their the rookie quarter, or cornerback that they got in the first yeah. round this year out of Alabama. Mm-hmm. And you know, on his tape, the problem was when he pressed, he got very handsy, which he was able to get away with at the college level. But now that he's getting a little bit overwhelmed, man, he is throwing his hands up every single play and trying to jam guys. And yep. the penalties are absolutely absurd. It felt like between holding and off or and pass interference, he had to have gotten flagged like six times last night. Well, I was going to say, I think it's at least four times because they just kept showing him every single time, every time. I'm like, who? And then he would complain good? after the fact. It's like you're <laughs> – Oh, yeah. It's yeah. obvious that you're just getting completely outplayed here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and credit to the line or the Seattle for taking advantage up. of it. Oh, for sure. It doesn't, it doesn't help that he was matched up against either – Amon Ra or Jamison Williams. Like, both of those guys are going to make you look dumb. They've done it to better people. He's yeah. just... Patrick, uh, Terion is a lion. Yes. Oh, my bad. I had it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. I'm an idiot. You're good. But, but, but the, the well, point is still it, it valid, though, because he's got DK as, Metcalf, yeah, Lockett, and then Jake. You have a monster Metcalf, of a man. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I got the receivers wrong. I'm sorry. No, you're good. The, the, the That's because the, the whole time I'm with you, I'm like, yeah, you're right. I see where he's going with this. Um, but, no, it's probably even more the case on Seattle side, especially Metcalf. I mean, Carlton uh, – well, now I'm blanking. Carlton Davis, I think, Carlton was the one Davis, yeah. yeah, was getting completely overwhelmed by Metcalf, too. Um, 104 yards on 12 targets, seven receptions. <laughs> like, yeah. so I understand it, but man, they've got to find a way to shore that up. The defense is the only thing I have some questions about at this point for the Lions, but otherwise, I'm feeling pretty good about my Super Bowl prediction. They're looking pretty I'm solid. Gonna, we'll see. We will. There's plenty of time left Super to play. I had Lions and Texans. That's crazy, man. Well, <laughs> we'll see. They're looking. I, I, I can love see you. that crazy. Like, Two years. Yeah, that's that's too soon for that. Before Rasheed Rice had his knee exploded, it was the Chiefs by a lot. I'll say it's the Chiefs the, and I Well, I only said not the Chiefs because it is so hard to three-peat, man. If anyone's yeah. going to do it, it's Kansas City, but I don't feel comfortable betting on that. I think Taylor Swift is going to pick them up by their bootstraps and carry them there. If she's going to serve them avocado toast herself. Now, hold on, though. So, fun fact here. You guys saw Travis. Well, well, you saw Travis Kelsey had a decent week last week, week, right? Yeah. I think he had, uh, yeah, 89 89 yards, 89 receptions. 89 yards on seven receptions against the Chargers. I lost time, yeah. Taylor Swift was not at that game. Oh, the conspiracy. Just saying. Just saying. Is it her fault? (laughs) Yes. Um. And before we move on, (laughs) before we move on from this, I just got to tell one other fun story. I don't know if you saw uh, uh, Dan Campbell's press conference after the game, the coach for the Lions. Uh, The so one of the reporters had to tell him that Jared Goff had a perfect game, which (laughs) is a very Dan Campbell thing to not notice and or care about that. But the problem was Dan immediately was shocked and felt terrible. And then went on to explain he gave the game ball to Jamison Williams. Yeah. <laughs> Not realizing that Goff literally had a 100% completion percentage. He's like, yeah, I knew he had a good game, but shit. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, man, I know this is the first time this has ever happened ever, but uh, yeah, <laughs> my bad. But Jamison Williams had... Two receptions for 80 yards and a touchdown, 70-yard bomb on there. That was thrown by Jared Goff, by the way, in case we're not keeping score there. I thought it was thrown by Amon Ra, who has more touchdowns this year than Bryce Young. Yes, he does. And, yes, Amon Amon Ra throwing a touchdown in a a spot where they absolutely did not need him to. That's the the best part. What was that, the second quarter? Yeah, they're like, and Dan Campbell talked about that too. He's like, oh, we've had this dialed up for a long time. We just never found a, a good spot to use it in game. Like, yeah. you're just stunning on these guys at this point. They're like, up I, I, seven points with six and a half, or almost seven minutes left in the third quarter, 
we're going to have the receiver throw a touchdown here. <laughs> Seems like the right time. Yeah, that put yeah. him up 14 to 27. <laughs> Cuz fuck him, that's why. <laughs> That seemed like a first <laughs> touchdown player, like a last second ditch effort. I just want to break their spirit. <laughs> oh man, uh, that's incredible. But also, I don't think it's any way, coincidence he did it on prime time Monday Night Football. Oh no, yeah. I As the other game was uh, wrapping up, I don't know if it's considered a perfect game because I think it's 15 passes has to be. But uh, Kurt Warner was 10 for 10. Yeah, just to throw that was that the most there. recent one. 100%. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but Warner, eight. Warner, well, the, here's the other thing too. You look at the like the the passing chart for Jared Goff. He wasn't having a Bo Nix dink and dunk game. 18 completions, five of those were at or behind the line of scrimmage. Yep. The rest, he was actually out there slinging it and again, including a couple of deep shots that he took. He had one where it was incomplete, yep. but it got called back for I think OPI. <laughs> Yeah, it was offensive pass interference because the receiver was like, we're not ruining this game. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for Jared. As he just yeah. swings his arms out and waxes the defender in the face. Ryan, or Ryan Gosling, that's the one. <laughs> it's the other hot Ryan. <laughs> the other one. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Uh, whose turn is it even anyway at this point? Patrick, you picked that one, didn't you? Yes, I say so. I believe it is Mike's. Mike, you're up. Oh, I stopped paying attention. Um... We're Let's doing see. a podcast, Mike. Get your head in the game. Would you guys rather talk about somebody getting fired, Devontae Adams, or the Rappers destroying the Bills? Ooh, really? No Vikings, Mike. No Vikes. We know they're good. We wow. know the Darnold is good. <laughs> we know the Darnold is coming back. Revenge towards MVP. 2024. Maybe it's a coincidence that it's also an election year. I don't know, but the Darnold is back. <laughs> Wasn't that Derek Carr that supposedly plays better in election years? I, I don't know. I All think it I was Derek Carr. His stats just to make sure, though. <laughs> I do know the Darnold has a 69% completion percentage, though. So he is just the coolest guy there is. Nice. <clears throat> um, All right, it is Derek yeah. Carr. He's an incredible player during presidential election years. Well... He huh. had two games where the Saints put up, what, 40-plus points? And then I mean, uh, last week was pretty rough. His, his 2021 season was statistically on par with his 2020 season. So, right. And his 2019, so you might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Woof. It's Got not a pattern guys. until it is one. He's getting ahead uh, of the curve. I think we talk about Devontae Adams and where that guy's going. Yeah, to go. we, we got to hit on it. Oh, yeah. Because I hope the Chiefs, well, I don't hope because obviously I don't want the Chiefs to continue dominating, but the Chiefs should make a push for him. I mean, fuck it. Why not? Go get Devontae. Have Patrick Mahomes and Devontae. Who knows how long they'll have Devontae. I don't know how long his contract is. He's got two years left. Yeah, get Devontae while you can. So you have Devontae, Rasheed Rice, and Xavier Worthy. Oh, and Travis Kelsey, or at least the shell of Travis Kelsey. I mean, my well, Taylor God. Swift's gone now, so, I mean, we might get full Travis Kelsey back. Well, she might come back. You never know with that one. Well, they, weren't, they were scheduled to she, break up, though, so. She has we'll the emotional stability of a sixth grader and loves to sing about it, so you never know what's going to happen with her. And she became a billionaire because of it. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> grown men and women think they're still sixth graders. Look, sometimes oh, I just Christ. need to stare out of my car windshield while it's raining and feel sad for a while. Okay, Mike? Yeah, sometimes. when my Spotify rap comes out here in a few weeks, do not be surprised. Sometimes I just like to hold hands and hold arms with people in a movie theater and run in circles during a Taylor Swift movie. It's a perfectly normal thing. <laughs> I forgot a about Swift that. Movie. It's a perfectly normal behavior. No, that was a thing. That they released like a live version of her concert in theaters. Oh, that thing. Yeah. Okay, I thought it meant an actual movie. Uh, I'm sure it's coming. Know. I, I mean, it's not the director's cut. It's Taylor's version because that, ah. you know what? Fuck it. We're taking the podcast. That <laughs> twat, that twat <laughs> just wants to make more money and take advantage of donkey brained people. Fuck her. <laughs> Stop buying her new fucking album where she replaces a word <laughs> in a song. <laughs> Instead of okay. he looks up grinning like a devil, it's he looks up smiling like a devil. Holy shit, have you heard this yet? Have you heard Taylor's new song? It's groundbreaking. 
it's on a pedestal, man. My... Move over, Sabrina Carpenter. How dare you try to get in the industry? Have you heard Taylor Swift <laughs> sing about a boyfriend before? Because she hasn't stopped for 20 fucking Dude, years. My favorite thing, and I'm saying this, it's like I do enjoy some of Taylor Swift's There's music. There's your fucking bit to open a, song, uh, open a fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm clipping this. Grill, Brandon. <laughs> anyway... No, I, and I like a lot of her music, so I'm I'm saying this. I'm completely freaking sidetracked after all that now. Um, she, oh yeah, so that's what it was. So I, I don't remember the name of the song, but she had. I think it was "All Too Well" was one of her songs that was really popular. And when she started doing the Taylor's version stuff, it got so hyped up because it's like, oh, she's doing a 10 minute version of this song. Oh, God, it's no, gonna be so good. Song? And I listened to it. She probably added four lines of dialogue and about and seven and a half of, minutes of instrumentals and mm, the uh, amount of times that that plays at the mm, bar is stupid. In, in a bar? I, in Dude, a bar. In that's a not a bar song. That is not it. even a little bit of bar song. What? Oh, you don't have to tell me twice. Jesus Christ. Are people Use some of those million skips that you have, man. No, that's not I'm... a song you fuck to either. Oh my God. No, what I is this? Yell for skipping it. The <laughs> person who plays are like, why are you skipping Taylor Swift? She's an icon. <laughs> like, you're not wrong, but that's not a bar song. You're bumming everybody out. <laughs> exactly. Holy shit, that's crazy. What? <laughs> it's I like know. Fortnite winning song of the summer. What? <laughs> because it's called Fortnite, man. She knew what she was doing. Not even a good summer song. It's not even a great song. <laughs> when I think of summer song, I think of fun. I think of like warm summer rays, the beach, hanging with my friends. Mm. Give me a bar song all day, not. Mm. Oh, I play acoustic guitar, uh. kind of okay. Yada yada yada. <laughs> my boyfriend broke up with me again. Fuck you. <laughs> so, so Devontae to Adams. This, yeah, to bring this back to the podcast, Mike, I apologize, but the Chiefs probably are not getting him. They only have about four and a half million dollars of cap space. So Well, it's all monopoly money anyways. None of it matters. Well, yeah, we I can said, just I'm add sure seven find, void years. I'm yeah, sure. they, they could find some way to make it work, but borrow some money from moment, Taylor Swift. Yeah. Uh, and True. pay this I'd man. I'd say she's probably worth more than the Hunt family combined. Yeah. They act like it, at least. I'm sure yeah, that's I'm true. sure Patty can restructure his contract to be like, dude, just pay me $100,000 this year. Go get Devonta. I'm giving yeah. my money this year. The salary care. cap's made up. It doesn't exist. Yeah. But to, to get to the point that <laughs> we were slowly getting to, um, this might be one of the rare cases where waiting to trade Devonta might have been the smart move because the report was a ton of teams – came to the Raiders during the offseason to just talk about trades, and they were just, nope, non-starter, not even talking about it, not even going to throw theoreticals out there, which if you're going to trade a guy, you typically want to do it in the offseason before things start to lay out and you have Possibly to put your kind of get your back against the wall. And the good thing with the Raiders is they're dealing with teams that either have severe needs or like injuries like the Chiefs, and in their situation, you know, they really don't have to move him. It's not that Devontae's trying to force his way out. Um, they could still, you know, play him and be somewhat competitive, maybe try to fight for a playoff spot. You know, they're playing this very, very well right now. So credit to the Raiders. Go, go, go. I say, except for the fact that Devontae requested the trade. That oh, he did. All yeah. Okay, okay. That changes this, this everything. This is not the Raiders saying, oh, we're gonna shop him. This is Devontae saying, like, hey. I'm not going to play next week. I want to get traded. Mm -hmm. See, I did not see that part of it. So now I yeah. sound like an idiot. Yeah. It, what, what was it? Did he say, like, he very much prefers a trade or something like that? Yeah, he would rather get traded than play another game for the Raiders is, yeah. the way that, is basically the way that he worded it. I thought it came up pretty blunt of where he's like, man, fuck this. Like, I came here yeah. to play with Derek Carr, and Derek Carr's not here anymore. This team sucks. I want to leave. Would they take Amari Cooper? So, I, <laughs> I don't want see that get floated around, but I'm, I'm right there with Mike. Like, you know, you wouldn't already, want him. We had to restructure Amari's Cooper or Amari's deal to 
to make it so that our cap will work next year when we have to pay our other players. So we then have to do the same thing with Devontae if we get him. We'd be getting a receiver who's two years older, currently has a uh, – wow, I just lost my word there. Um, Words are hard. A soft tissue injury in the hamstring, which is not always great for receivers to come back from. Like, it's not – I don't think it's a good trade. I don't think we should do it. I would love to, you know, get Devontae Adams for a second-round pick, have him, Judy, and Amari Cooper, but – it, it wouldn't I'd be smart, though. Cooper. It wouldn't I be don't. smart. No, no, it wouldn't. Not at all. It would be cool as hell. Like, it'd be a great yeah. Madden trade. Not a good real-life trade. I don't think it fucking changes a thing with the Browns. I think we still are stuck with Deshaun Watson, even if we get Devontae Bar- or, yeah, Devontae Adams. Well, and Devontae the offensive Parker. line. Like, Yeah, like, cool. It, it, what Patrick just said, it's a cool Madden trade, but in real life, it's like, that doesn't solve our issues. It's like, we've yeah. got good receivers. No, I, I agree with you. My, my only possible thought would be, like, let's give Watson no possible excuses. But, again, the line is still going to be what people are going to harp on for the rest of the year, and it would be kind of Browns-esque to go out and get another receiver and just completely ignore the offensive line. But, uh, but again, we talked about the Chiefs. It's going to be tough with the salary cap that may or may not be real. But one team that wouldn't have to do much, do you either you happen to have Devontae's actual contract numbers up currently? Uh, let me find it. I just had it. Um, shit, where'd it go? Where, where's the money? Because there's one team that I'm looking at right now that might make too much sense. Uh, his salary this year is 16.9 million and it jumps to 35.7 next year. Well, guess none of it is guaranteed, though. Oh, that's it. Wow. But none of it that that is actually important. So I'm looking at a team that has 16.8 million in open cap space and also happens to have a pass rusher who has yet to even enter the building and doesn't seem to be too interested in signing the deals that he's being offered. J E T S Jets, 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 Jets. 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 Uh, I think think it has him listed at 17, but yeah. Okay. But yeah, 16.809 is what I've got. That's why I was like, who are you talking about? Cause I didn't see that number on my page. So it just makes too much sense. You send Hassan Reddick over to the Raiders and just completely like turn that defensive line into an absolute weapon because that's going to be how you're going to win games this year, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lock him up for a few years. They've got the cap space to sign him to a longer deal, especially without a true franchise quarterback on that roster. And then getting another pass catcher for Aaron Rodgers, a guy who he does trust. And despite coming off those injuries, he's still shown that he can be an elite wide receiver one. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. so I mean, to me right now, without you know going on a super deep dive here, man, I think the Jets make a lot of sense, and boy, that would be a lot of fun to watch. I mean, the it's, Jets are definitely the favorite for him to land it, just because of the Rodgers and Devontae connection. What were we gonna say, Patrick? I was gonna say I've seen some sneaky stuff about the uh, the Steelers because they were real. The Steelers deep are on the trade. always in on a receiver. It I, feels like I say yeah. they were deep in on the Ayuk trade. And that didn't pan out. And behind George Pickens, who do they have? Now, uh, does uh, not Calvin Austin the third? Is that his name? Oh, Pat yeah. Fryermuth. <laughs> yeah. So here's the other part, and I'm not 100 percent sure on this. Does Devonte have any kind of a no trade clause? He does. So, so he would want, like, from what I'm reading, is like he would want some type of that money next year to be guaranteed. Which is fine. So he would want that second year of the contract to get him money. He doesn't want to go and try and get a new contract at 33 years old. Which is fair, but the only reason I bring up the no trade, when you bring up Pittsburgh, as good as Justin Fields is playing right now, we've kind of seen this story before. Is Devontae going to bet on himself to go to an, another team with an unsure quarterback situation like he did with Derek Carr and be stuck in the same exact rut all over again if Fields doesn't pan out? Or if they do switch to Russ and the wheels fall off there, yeah. Or is he gonna like want to force himself somewhere that has a stable quarterback situation? I'm just saying, look at the two teams you're comparing. Yeah, the Raiders, who have been an absolute dumpster fire outside of That's 2000 fair. Yeah. to 2002 in the 80s, 
versus the Steelers who haven't been under 500 and what? But years? but that doesn't guarantee that you're going to have good quarterback play. Look at Kenny Pickett the last two play. years. But you're with an incredible long. organization. But does Devontae yeah, care but- about that? Or does he want to go out and be able to actually produce and put up numbers and have fun? I mean, yeah, that's fair. Um, I'm gonna. I guess it depends on if you want to be the guy or if you want a super, a potential Super Bowl. I'm gonna say it's the latter to what Brandon said because you know he was playing with Rodgers for a while, loved playing with Rodgers, and left because what he couldn't get the money. Is that why? But he went to the Raiders because Derek Carr. He went to the Raiders because he could. He obviously got paid by the Raiders, mm-hmm. and he can go have fun with his mm-hmm. college boy. Like, those guys were tight. They loved playing yeah. together. So I think he's in it for the fun, and of course the money. Who is it? Oh, yeah. But I don't know. I think he's going to go to where he can have a good time. Whether he wants to be wide receiver one, I'm sure he does. But who knows? Every, really? All the I, stories I heard about Justin Fields in college, he's a fun guy. Yeah, so I can see him going to the Steelers. <laughs> Steelers makes sense. I fucking this guy. <laughs> I don't want to see that happen, but yeah. You also heard Chase Young was a fun guy when you were down there. So, well, Chase Young also shit his pants so that offensive linemen would not want to touch him. Fucking insane. And it worked. And oh, he's it a, absolutely and he's worked. terrible in the NFL now. Could yes, be because tough. he can't shit his pants. Yeah, we, we were talking about we me and Mike figured it out last week. Do you know what team he's on right now, Patrick? Um I wanted I know uh is it still the Niners? He's on the Saints. Yep. He's on the Saints. The really? Saints. Yeah, we again it literally until we talked about that game for a minute last week, neither of us knew that. Huh. And Jadavian Clowney's a Panther too, by the way, which threw me off. That one I knew. But that one's still weird. Well, watch, let's... Yeah. watch Devontae go to, like, the Bills. Watch him end up Ooh. there. Or, you Ooh. know what would be really funny, actually? Watch him be a Titan. His career is <laughs> over. <laughs> We're just going to collect <laughs> <laughs> retirement receivers. Yeah, Calvin Ridley, <laughs> just, DeAndre Hopkins. No, DeAndre Hopkins. Did you, did you watch any of that game at all? I know it sucked, but... I, I saw bits and pieces really. of Hopkins it. Hopkins dropped, like, two of the easiest passes there were, and I'm like, holy crap receivers go to Tennessee to die. There's yes. no doubt about it anymore. Not a doubt in my mind. When was the last good Titans receiver? A.J. Brown. Yeah. Oh, I legitimately forgot A.J. Brown was a Titan. You forget. Kenny yeah. Britt. Wow. They let him walk. Kenny Britt was okay. Uh, Dorian Green Beckham had a ton of hype around him, but he never turned in anything. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, oh, man. Well, let, let's get one uh, more uh, in uh, here. Oh, God. Did you find one? No, I, I, I couldn't. Dyson, I can't remember his first name. That's a fact. Back with, like, the when they played the Rams in the Super Bowl. All right, so we're getting back a little too Oh, yeah, far. we're going way back there. All right, so let's sneak one more topic in here before we get to our pickums. And we're four games in. You start to get a feel for what teams are really going to look like for the remainder of the year. And – with how the NFL works and how quickly things turn around and coaches get fired, conversations are already happening about who's on the hot seat. And my question is just looking at the full landscape. I'll start with you, Patrick. All the coaches that are kind of, you know, going back and forth right now, who do you see potentially getting the boot first this year? So someone's going to get fired in the middle of the year. It always happens. Oh, yeah. Who is your top candidate right now to be out of their franchise? I mean, the clear answer is Doug Peterson. I mean, 0-4, but yeah, I feel like they're not going to give up on him that quick. I feel like Nick Sirianni's coaching himself out of that Eagles job real fast. 100% agreed. 100% agreed. And, and Sirianni might get it before Peterson. We'll see. Yeah. Like, Peterson, what's scaring me with Doug Peterson is his, his interviews now, too. Or like the post game interviews where he's acting like, "Oh, why would you ask me about my job? That's weird," and trying to be like all <laughs> coy about it. Like things yeah. aren't going well. Um, and then he, when he made the comment about everything's on the table, talking about Trevor Lawrence and potentially benching him, which I'm sure Sasha Khan's thrilled about. Oh uh, yeah, that, that probably went over well. So I agree with you. Peterson's the most likely, but a hundred percent in lockstep that Nick Sirianni is 
taking a Ferrari right now and driving it into the fucking lake. <laughs> and Philly fans are brutal. There is no oh, yeah. way if as they should be. As laugh. they should be. Because he's not like he's not even Dan Campbell aggressive during games. He just picks the dumbest spots to be <laughs> aggressive. Where analytics isn't on your side, like the team isn't on your side, like nothing is really adding up. And he's dealing no. with some injuries, man. They had no receivers last week. It was Dallas Goddard, Saquon Barkley, and a prayer as they got you know, their ass is handed to them by the Bucks, But, yeah, I agree. Those are the two guys that stick out. Mike, any, any other names that kind of float to your mind, or do you agree with us on those? I mean, I want Mike McCarthy fired because that guy's a fraud, <laughs> and that Cowboys team is better than they look. But, yeah, Nick Sirianni and Doug Peterson, those are, they're too obvious. They're not going to – Eberflus isn't going to get fired, rookie quarterback. I feel like the Bears are actually going in the right direction where they're yeah. – you know, they built the team around Caleb. And, I think their OC is hope, more likely to get the boot than, than yeah, Eberflus is. And, and I hope they hang on to Eberflus. Like, give Caleb some stability. Don't do that stupid idea that a lot of teams do where it's like, oh, fire the coach. We'll give the next coach eight games. Fire him, and then quarterbacks never get it figured out. Why isn't um, this guy developing? I don't understand. Sala, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I think he's fine. I think Bob is fine. So, yeah, I think uh, Sirianni, then Peterson, and I hope McCarthy. I really hope McCarthy. Sal, so I hope McCarthy. Fucking <laughs> sucks, man. Again, <laughs> I hate that dude. That dude is a legit bum. <laughs> I, I think he's a he's a dark horse candidate here, man, because Jerry Jones talked about, like, not wanting to make a lot of changes this offseason. He would rather just turn up the temperature and try to win with the guys he has, but – I mean, dude's got only so much time left on this earth, and he wants to he wants to see a Super Bowl. Like, if he sees an opportunity to make a change with like a Belichick or something on the horizon, don't be surprised if he fires McCarthy to get ahead of the game in the interview process. I would be so happy. That team is so much better than they are. That guy. Bring from- back Jason Garrett. Fox. Bring him back. <laughs> For the Bring love of God, no. Wait. I wonder what Jeff Fish is up to. I know the 17 games, but I'd love to see the Cowboys go seven and nine. <laughs> I mean, he, he looked great in that uh that Steve McNair uh, documentary. Jesus. So I want them to bring on Fisher as an interim after they win 10 games just to see if his head explodes. <laughs> well, his mustache would light on fire. First. Yeah. The immovable object, the unstoppable force. Something would have to give there. I don't know what. It, <laughs> What's Herb up to? Anybody give Urban a call? <laughs> give him oh, another shot. Now he's going to Notre Dame, man. <laughs> he's going to go kick Aubrey. <laughs> Dude, You're not allowed to do that in the NFL. Kick Aubrey. <laughs> Fantasy football. You're only allowed to do that to children. All right. Yeah. Get it right, Urban. <laughs> no thing. All right. So we're we're gonna get into the the pick 'em rapid fire. Only other note that I had, just an interesting thing. Uh obviously this is NBA, but Adrian Wojnarowski announcing his retirement. Well deserved. One of the best, you know, NBA insiders we've seen. Uh the last Woj bomb he dropped to was a Cavalier signing, which was cool when Okoro signed his extension. But He's gone now. Sham Sharani was kind of the first name that was talked about, but now something interesting, and I don't know if they're trying to save money or if they're just trying to kill this man, but Adam Schefter is being considered. For basketball? For basketball and football. <laughs> for literally everything. What? <laughs> Why? I, I don't understand how you do – because Schefter, he went on and on about this when Woj retired. Like, your life does not stop when you're an insider. Your phone is glued to your side – like you can't, you know, as much as sleep without being afraid that you miss something. So when you're taking on an extra sport, like I don't, I don't understand how you pulled it off. Sham, Sham Sharani is the obvious choice because he's already got all the contacts and everything. I just think they don't want to yeah. pay him. But I don't know that that just caught me off guard. I don't know how you could possibly do that at that scale. I mean, so you just. just- you just have to be doing the job for I don't I don't know. You have no responsibilities at all. That's how you do it. I'm sure he's got kids or something. Well, that's Maybe the, it's like you're just a single guy or girl with zero responsibilities and I guess just mommy or daddy money. So you never really have to have any worries. You have maids around the house cleaning, cooking for you. Like all you do is eat, sleep and report. That's it. You have no time for anything else. Yeah, Wojo's at that talk- point. Go ahead. I say at that point, just bring in Mel Kiper. At least he has 
goofy oh, hair that people can look at and laugh at. <laughs> but then who's going to cover the draft incorrectly? Mel Kuyper can still do it because all he does is the draft. Who the hell is Mel Kuyper anyway? All right. <laughs> so let's go ahead and wrap this up, boys. So week five pick em. So this is this could not have worked out more perfectly, right? So Patrick, you're joining on week five. Not that that's yep. cheating or anything. But me and Mike fault. You me, guys brought me in late. Let, d- talk to talk to the big wigs. <laughs> talk to the guys that pay you or don't. I don't know. Um, so me and Mike have been tracking this. Mike got off to a hot start this week, though. He goes eight and eight. I go 10 and six. And we are at a perfect 32 and 32. We are tied and we are Love both it. 500. So literally could not have worked out better. We're going to go with a fresh slate here. These games are off the board. I'm going to reset it to all zeros when we're done on the sheet. And Cheetah. we're going to start over. So, yeah, you would. <laughs> You're scared. Why? I get what, do you mean? You're sc- what do you scared. mean? Cheat? We're literally 500, as are you, Mr. Zero and Zero. Yeah, I'm undefeated. You guys have been beaten 32 times by the Pickums. Anyway, <laughs> so... Same format that we had before. We're since Patrick, it's your first show. You'll get first pick for each one of these games. I'll go Patrick, Mike, and then myself. It's gonna run down through these games. No more than a ten second response on each one of these. You guys ready? Yep. No. All right. Good. Thursday night football. Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons. Patrick. Bucks. Bucks. Not even close. Ooh, ooh, not even. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna uh, say at least ten points. I'm gonna remember that. Mike, That's where, where are they? Atlanta? In Atlanta. Yeah. Give me hot Atlanta just because I want to disagree with Patrick. All right. <laughs> and I, and Let I, it be known that if I'm down one loss to him, it's simply out of spite. <laughs> well, good news, Mike. I'm going to roll with you at least. I gotta, I'm got i going with the hot hand. Give me Atlanta. Uh, well, I guess that's not really the hot hand. Both teams have looked good. But I believe in the Dirty Birds. Yeah, so Baker Bucks looks three and one. Falcons are two and two. <laughs> Baker Eddie. looks incredible, man. I want to go with the Bucks. <laughs> you can still change your mind, but Don't you got three seconds side, to do it. <sighs> no. All right. No. Falcons it is. All right. First international game of the year in London, New York Jets, Minnesota Vikings, 930 in the morning on Sunday. I'm going with the Jets. They have a slightly Ooh. less egregious uh, time difference in game time than the Vikings. <laughs> Their time zones match up a little better. <laughs> an hour doesn't matter and i think sam darnold's gonna shit his pants playing against his old team the darnold <laughs> going Boss international shutting down jettas <laughs> ah that's crazy wow by shutting down i mean like 85 yards and a touchdown guys i'm not <laughs> like calm down he's had a touchdown every game i'm thinking he's gonna try to keep the streak going give me yeah. uh give me mike spikes baby i'm gonna take I'm going to take the Vikings, too. I I feel like Aaron Rodgers just isn't going to be interested enough to play well. Or he's going to go try to find some, like, weird New Amsterdam drug lord and, you know, just not be focused on the game. Yeah, he hasn't he, he gotten scares good me. weed yet. That's why he's not playing well. Oh, so maybe it'll, it'll have the opposite Rogers. effect. That guy crushes yeah. it. <laughs> anyway, we're, we're off to a bad start. Carolina at Chicago. Start of the 1 o'clock slate. Um... I'm liking how Andy Dalton's making the Panthers offense look. I'm going to take the Panthers. All right. Panthers. Mike. Uh, give me the Panthers. All right. Hey, we're finally disagreeing on something. Bears at home. Offense looked much better. Caleb's been playing better every week. I'll go ahead and take the Bears. Uh, Baltimore at Cincinnati. I got to go with the hot hand, and Baltimore looked way too damn Cincinnati's good. Cincinnati's coming <laughs> off a win. What do you mean? I understand that, but Baltimore is coming off an ass whooping. Yeah, they looked very good, Mike. Yeah, uh, that stadium is going to get stinky fast. Give me the Ravens. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going with it's the Ravens too. Smell. Cincinnati is not back, man. They they finally did win a game, but it was against the Panthers, who did not look as good as they did the first time Andy Dalton put on that uniform, and they realized that they had a chance. Panthers forgot yeah. how to tackle that game. Did you see Jamar's touchdown? It was. Oh yeah. It was good for Jamar, but yikes, man. <laughs> Forgot this defense is still bad. Um, yeah. Next up, speaking of stinky, uh, Miami at New England, 1 o'clock. They hid this one in the first slate. Patrick. Um, 
I, I'm going to go New England. I, I don't trust – I don't even know who the Dolphins quarterback is at this point anymore. But Tyler Huntley, I think. Is it? Yeah. I don't know if it's still going to be. Yeah. I, say, I feel like Drake May is coming in halftime. He's going to be the second coming of I hope not. Mac Jones. I hope not. He's going to get destroyed. That line is so bad. Against the Dolphins? Yes. Against oh, anybody. No. Anyway. I'm still taking the Patriots. That's fine, Mike. Uh, I want the Dolphins to win because it helps my bet, but I guess the Patriots, man. Because <laughs> the Dolphins look pitiful. They, they look no, no quarterback understands how the offense is run except for – Ooh, is Tua allowed to come back yet? He's not no. going to be back, man. He's, I'm, he's on the uh, IR, isn't he? Yeah, he's is on he IR. He's not eligible even, okay. yeah. I, yeah, IR is guaranteed four games. I, I don't care about him retiring. I'm just curious on if he was eligible to come back. Okay, so no. I'm going with the Patriots. Because yeah. if there was a chance that Tua could come back, I'd take the Dolphins. It, again, it's going to be an ugly game. I'm taking the Patriots, too. They've definitely got the better defense. Jacoby Reset's not going to lose them the game, and I think that's all you really have to do right now to beat the Dolphins in their current state. Yep. So. It's so sad. It's so sad because that team looks so good. They're so fun. So I know. We'll, we'll see if they, they make a trade or at some point, I, which I think they really might. Uh, They're going to trade for Devontae Adams. <laughs> <laughs> to play quarterback? No, all they need is another receiver, guys. That's true. Well, no, they just, need speed. They're going to trade for Xavier Worthy. Just 50 true. attempts of deep balls <laughs> to Devontae, yeah. Waddle, and Tyreek. <laughs> They're just going to put a jugs machine back there. <laughs> just send them on streaks. What was that robot from, like, backyard baseball and backyard football? Mr. Clanky? They're just going to have him back there. <laughs> rocketing footballs <laughs> into the air. Hey, go get it, kid. <laughs> All right, got another shitty game for obvious reasons. Cleveland Browns at the Washington Commanders. I, I have no faith in the Browns right now. The Commanders have looked very good offensively and defensively. That is a I'm weird kidding. sentence to say out loud. Yeah, I know. Wow. I don't trust the Browns give me Washington because they're yeah. stable. You know, Ugh. I again, just to be different, I'm going to go with uh, the Browns. I'm picking the Browns for this one. Well, you have because fun being sad on Sunday. It is a very <laughs> – We're all going to be sad, Brandon. I've enjoyed it for 29 right. years. Fuck you. Um, it's <laughs> a very Browns move to just snatch a win out of a team that's good. Like, I don't know. That's true. The Browns have only been back for 25 years, Mike. So, Ooh. sorry. Mm. Big fan. Big fan. Mm. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Cleveland, I'm, I'm taking Washington, man. I'm, I'm really hoping my son asks me to go do something on Sunday, so I have an excuse not to watch this. <laughs> not even joking. I, yeah. <laughs> Another ugly game coming up. Wow, a lot of ugly games this week. Indianapolis Colts at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not sure about Anthony Richardson's status as of yet. I say honestly, I was going to say if Flacco plays, I'm picking the Colts. There are no if ugly Richardson games. plays, is a little bit tougher. There are just ugly people. Who are the Colts playing? Jags. <laughs> well, as we know about the Jaguars. God hates them. I think I have to go with the Colts. <laughs> Because God absolutely despises the Jaguars. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to take the Colts, man. Jags look broken. It's a divisional game. It'll be close. I think I think Flacco plays. Colts win. Okay, if Flacco's playing, I'm taking them. So best game so far. Last one on the 1 o'clock slate. Buffalo at Houston. I Buffalo would like to say that. A tough loss. Buffalo is going to use this as a revenge game, but Houston is going to give just too much. Stephon Diggs is going to, you know, that's right. Stephon Diggs revenge team. game. Yep, I'm, I'm giving it to the Texans. Give me the Buffalo Soldiers because Stephon <laughs> Diggs is going to be a little baby back bitch. Oh, we have 15 <laughs> minutes left. Cut that. Um, <laughs> Stephon Diggs is going to be a baby back bitch and demand the ball 15 times. So CJ is going to have to force it to him, and Buffalo is going to play on that. Because that's what he did in Buffalo. Give me the Bills. Bills Mafia, baby. Leaving that in just to annoy you. Uh, <laughs> it does feel like 
this might be a stretch where Buffalo kind of comes back down to earth a little. Not a good comeback game or get right game against Houston. I'll I'm gonna take the Texans. You guys are betting against Josh Darnold. That's crazy. Next uh, four o'clock slate now. Las Vegas Raiders at Denver Broncos. God, these games suck. Actually, these Who games did suck. this? <laughs> Who's in charge? <laughs> Who hurt you? <laughs> I say I, I like Minshew Mania. I'm sticking with uh sticking with the Raiders. All right. Yeah, I gotta go Raiders. Denver's won two in a row. If they hadn't won two in a row, two games they probably shouldn't have, I'd be tempted here because of their defense. But I'm not buying it. I'll take Vegas too. Uh, they first had game passing yards yep. last week. The only they reason they cool. won is because the other team didn't want to. Yeah, that's true. They didn't win. The other team lost. That's a good point. Next up, Arizona at San Francisco. San Francisco finally seemed like they they got themselves together beating New England last week. Arizona got blown out by Washington. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna take the Niners. It's sooner or later, Purdy's got to you know get back into the groove of the last two years. Um, Purdy, I feel like hasn't even really been that bad. He I, hasn't, but like he, he hasn't been as good as he's been in the last couple of years. Him and Ayuk have got to put it together sooner or later. I thought until uh, what was it two nights ago when Seattle played, he was the passing leader. I thought so. I thought he's been on fire. But yeah, give me the Niners. Yeah, I'm going to take the Niners as well. Arizona, their defense looks atrocious. They're going to carve them up. Uh, Green Bay Packers at the Los Angeles Rams. Jordan Love second uh, game back. Is it this is Jordan Love coming back? He was back this week and it did not look good until the end. It seemed like it took a while to shake the rust off in that Minnesota game. Yeah, right, I well, think Minnesota more played prevent though type of deal. Yeah, that's they fair. were up twenty eight and they're just kind of they're not going to score that. But go ahead. Minnesota's defense has been solid all year, so I'm going to give that more to Minnesota than him shaking off the rust. But I'm going with the the pack on this one. Go pack, go. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think uh, everybody's still hurt on the Rams, right? Nobody's yeah, they're dealing out. with a ton of injuries. It yeah. felt like they kind of threw everything they had out there against the Niners to get that win, and they're just not the same team. Yeah, go Pack Go. Give me the Packers. I also just realized, unless we didn't pick it yet, no. Oh, no, yeah, never mind. I thought Minnesota was on a bye. I'm like, that could not have been worse timing for how hot they were right <laughs> now. But, no, they're just playing in London. Uh, next up, 425, New York Giants at the Seahawks. I mean, do you want me to say it first? Seahawks. Yeah, I was going to say. Danny Dimes can't keep it up. He looked like a legitimate quarterback two weeks in a row. There's no way that's sustainable. I At some point, he's going to go back to eating glue and suck again. <laughs> <laughs> See that T I am tempted to take the Giants just to give me an upset somewhere in here. Uh, I'm gonna do it. I have no real reason to. Maybe Seattle just is coming down a little bit after a a, a rough game on Monday night. And, and, and we'll see. I, I don't know, Jim. Um <laughs> This guy. Sunday <laughs> this, night game. This guy's playing mind games with themselves. Every answer was A, so we picked <laughs> B. <laughs> yep. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, next up, Sunday night, Dallas Cowboys at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I got to give this one to the Steel City. Um, I, I think they're just going to ruin Dak. Is Mike McCarthy fired yet in this scenario? Uh, he will be after no. how badly they get their ass beat. Uh, shoot. Ah, give me the Cowboys. <laughs> Ooh. I'm going to start Never. this off 4-12. and 12. I don't care. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, there's bye weeks. What is it? So 4-8? and eight? Something like that. I'm not doing the math. Uh, but I'm going to run with Patrick here. I like Pittsburgh. That defense is going to wreak havoc on Dak. I don't think they're going to be ready for it. Uh, and it's prime time, too, which I don't trust Dallas in prime time. Last no. one. Monday night. New Orleans Saints at the Kansas City Chiefs. I, I feel like the Saints are going to rediscover the magic of the first two weeks, and it's going to be an old-fashioned shootout, but Chiefs aren't just going to have enough offense to, to match them. So Saints taking it. Uh, joke's on you. You can't beat the refs. I'm taking the Chiefs. You're right, and I have seen this happen <laughs> once this year. I I can't not pick Kansas City until they show me they know how to lose a game. Uh, so yeah, I'll take the Chiefs, and I think the 
Saints are a little bit of frauds. I think we're seeing their true colors more now with Derek Carr having actual expectations on his shoulders and now shitting the bed. Honestly. Yeah, now, now he's shit the bed, so the expectations are off of his shoulders. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good point. I never I see it coming. honestly see the Saints just butt-fucking the Chiefs. I yeah. don't have a better phrase for that either. <laughs> I can what... see them just destroying them, but also, like, they're the Chiefs. You never know. They just pull it off somehow. I'm going to well, take what Mike said earlier about C.J. Stroud. Derek Carr is too dumb to realize what is on his shoulders. <laughs> See, he's, he's not, not the dumb. fun dumb, though. His teammates don't podcast. like him. He yeah. just no, he's just the dumb guy. He's romance to put on iPad. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get Derek Carr's well, PR team calling us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got... I hurt his feelings. <laughs> I'm oh. going to go home and blast Welcome to the Black Parade. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, I'm a uh, musicians are not my friends. <laughs> oh <laughs> boy, roasted everybody today. Well, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it here, you guys. This is exactly what I thought this was gonna turn into, and I am so happy about it. Thank you, Patrick, for coming on. We're glad to have you. Happy to to continue this going forward, Mike. As always, appreciate you, man. It's been fun. Thank you for letting us take up an hour 45 of your day and make sure you stick around next week. Cause I can promise you guys these takes are only going to get more decrepit, more out of control, <laughs> more questionable. I will have more work to do as I edit out the things that you guys don't hear. But anyway, guys, everybody I have, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I know how this goes, but on behalf of Patrick, Michael, I'm Brandon Soder. Have a good night, everybody.